Hey, Mr. President, what is the deal? Deal? No deal? Not even going to try to deal? Why am I thinking I'm getting the raw end of the deal? Why am I thinking this whole country is? Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And call it a tale of two presidents, humble by midterms, but each dealing with it on very different terms. We heard America shouting. And now all of us, Republicans and Democrats alike, must say, we hear you. We will work together to earn the jobs you have given us. I have no more campaigns to run. My only agenda, <laughs> I know because I won both of them. Well, so much for history repeating, right, to Ben Stein, Charles Payne, and Adam Lashinsky, along with Jamie Colby. Her new show, Strange Inheritance, is set to premiere on Fox Business come Monday. Much more on that. In the meantime, just letting you know that Dagan McDowell and Charlie Gasparino will be back next week. Did Charlie do anything in Davos? Well, thank God. But I digress. <laughs> All right, Charles Payne, um, what do you think? What do you think of this? The mixed messages, two different presidents, two different reactions. That was a moment right there in the State of the Union address, the off-scripted, uh, off-teleprompter moment when the president said, I won both of them. The new paradigm. Completely forgetting the last election. Right. Okay. <laughs> the, the new paradigm, Bill Clinton said, okay, I want a legacy of achievement that will be validated by the scoreboard, economic scoreboard, a scoreboard of what Washington could get done. What President Obama is doing, and maybe this is how we live from now on, is saying, hey, as long as I win, as long as I can convince the American public I'm the better choice, as long as I can say it was the past president and the mean Congress, maybe that's the new paradigm in Washington where it doesn't even matter if you get anything done, because obviously that's the path he's going on. Well, it's obviously not a Clintonian path, Jamie, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so he's signaling that as this president. I'm not going to go mm -hmm. that route. Right? I felt like it was inside voice, Neil. He might have been thinking it, but maybe he shouldn't have said it. What happened to a little humble pie? Remember, it was a billion-dollar mm -hmm. race. That's what it took to become president, and that money could have gone a lot of places. I was a little surprised that he would actually say it out loud. Uh, Adam, now, uh, did that tone on this president's part strike you as a little too in your face, given the midterms, given the fact that he was speaking in a body now that was dominated by Republicans mm -hmm. in both houses? Mm -hmm. I, I would say not right there. Right there, you know, the Republicans were a little bit rude, a little bit funny, so he was a little bit rude, a little bit funny. But overall, yes, I, were I think... Were you watching the same I, state of the union? <laughs> yes, I was. You, you, you me, weren't having a drinking game, were you? I mean, like... Because... <laughs> no, it's too early in California right. for, 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 for that... No, but I'm actually coming around to agreeing with you, Neil. I think that overall the speech was not conciliatory enough. He, he mentioned compromise but didn't offer any suggestions of it. I will point out that within a couple of days, Jack Lew was offered, the Treasury Secretary, was offering to work with Republicans on the corporate tax, which is an important issue. So it's not like there's no compromise here, but I wish the president had been a little more conciliatory in his address. You know, Ben Stein, what he was saying was, um, you know, I was not on this ballot. Uh, when, in fact, as you pointed out, in the midterms, his issues, his policies, his performance was very much on the ballot. Well, he was on the ballot in a big way in the midterms, whether his, whether anything else about him was on the ballot. Uh, he is not Clinton. Clinton, uh, for all his faults, was a conciliator. He was a man who wanted to get things done. He was not particularly ideological. He wanted to do the best job he could for the eight years he was there. Mr. Obama is a highly ideological person. Occasionally he lets that slide, but he is a ideological guy. Inside him is a powerful left-wing agenda. He wants to get it out there. He wants to just bribe, bribe, bribe the voters, the Democratic voters, possible Democratic voters, as much as he possibly can before he leaves office. He is not a guy really responsible for the whole country. He's responsible for pleasing his base. Oh, that's, that's it's ridiculous. A kind of a I thing. totally disagree with you. That, so, that we don't, you know, say, we don't say people are ridiculous on this show. We're gentlemen <laughs> no, on this show. No, I didn't say, say are you are ridiculous. I said what you said yeah, is, you, is yes, ridiculous, you yes, Ben. You well, oh, but we, then, I, I think I, what he's saying is to say that the president that. is bribe, bribe, bribe might strike many as a bit extreme, right? 
Well, but, and all, all I want to say is, I, I want to point out for what it's worth that the left wing of the Democratic Party is constantly upset with Barack Obama for not being as left wing as they not would like to that be. Speech, buddy. I, yeah. Not after that I speech, I don't think he's as much of an ideologue. I mean, I think he is certain things, but but ideologue isn't necessarily one. Of them. I also uh, want to point uh, out, uh, well, business. Charles Payne, what ideologue yeah. or not? I see three hundred twenty some odd billion in tax hikes over the next ten years. Right. I see free college being offered yet again. I see a lot of freebies being thrown people's way to the tone of. $70 billion, an increase in a budget when we're running deficits and a massive debt. Uh, that might not be left-wing to some, but it strikes me as just way off-wing. And, and how do you get it? There's no, nothing that the president talked about grows the economy. In fact, uh, bribe, bribe, bribe. He's talking $320 billion worth of freebies. You're a now, hater. No, no. You're think about what the president <laughs> said. Well, Adam, was there one single thing that he mentioned that made the audience say, I've got to sweat a little bit? I, you don't have to put an extra ounce of sweat in anything the president said to earn more money. Not not earn. The funny get thing is, though, that the economy else. is growing. That's the irony. Uh, is that the, the economy, economy is growing? Because the economy you know, is growing. Well, growing. That's an irony. Well. That, that's how bad it is. So just, that's a news flash because we have one good quarter of GDP out of like, 24. Well, you know, Are you kidding me? I have to second Ben's comment too that the president may not have been on the ballot, but certainly all these yeah. other candidates ran on his performance because as I travel I around agree. the country this year, I see how families are struggling, farming, ranching small business owners, and that's all they had to base their votes on. But, you know, part of the benefits well, he was, well, he was well, but ben, part of the benefits he was touting was, was saying, well, these are the kind of things that, that, that these big Western democracies do, providing, you know, sick leave to their workers and all that. But only a few paragraphs earlier, he had, <laughs> he had mentioned how U.S. job growth had eclipsed all of them combined, precisely because we don't saddle our corporations with all these extra demands, you know? Well, well, yeah, well, I, I, indeed, yes, America is not a full-blown Western European or Japanese welfare state. That is, accounts for part of its growth and dynamism. Look, all he was doing was saying to people, don't bother working, don't bother sweating, to put Charles's words in there. We're going to take care of all of it. Bread and circuses, not a good platform. So, Adam, you just have to feel miserable what you've inflicted on all of us, right? <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> Admit it. Yes, the short answer is yes. That's fine. That's the first step. Um, that's Admit fine. Yeah. The I, first I step is yeah, recognizing I mean, the problem. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I made this point in, in passing, but I do think it's an important point that we should ponder for a moment, which is that Bill Clinton was speaking at a time of economic recession, and Barack Obama is speaking at a time of, you know, recovery. I am not excusing him. I disagree with his tone. I wish it had been different. But it, the, the facts are, we're doing pretty well. Well, you know, but you do raise a very good point. And some, some of one us are doing well. Right. Some, some of us are right, doing well. Right, some are. But... You know, Bill Clinton had a re-election to, to, to run for and was planning and didn't want to, to, to screw that up. <clears throat> Barack Obama, as he made very clear, is done. Too clear. Yeah. Those stakes are higher, certainly, <laughs> when you have to face the American voter again. But let's not get too sure of ourselves. We might be in a recovery, but we're not recovered. What do you think, Charles? Yeah, you know, we have to put it in proper perspective. This is the worst post-recession recovery in history. We had one good blip on the GDP radar. That does not represent the past six years. Here's the thing. Come on. We do have uh, a much lower unemployment rate. Yes, we can talk about the quality of jobs. Because 17 million people job dropped out of the job Would you force, say that you know? if a Republican were in the White House? If 17 million people... Would you say that if a Republican were in the White House? Yes, absolutely. No, you wouldn't. You're a liar. If 17 million You're people dropped out of the job <laughs> force, <laughs> I would demand that the Republican get out of office. You would not. But here's the thing I do want to say. <laughs> Bill Clinton... He, he, he chose a path. We talked about where we are now. Let's talk about what happened after Bill Clinton moved to the center. Because we had an economic expansion. Well, Wages went right. up. The you market went that? up. We had six years. That was Pax Americana right there. And that was led by a Democrat. He gave him credit, Neil. He, he well, gave him credit. There right that. there, he we did, heard it. Neil. All right. Yes, he did. All right. I just want to agitate everybody.